the most challenging thing about fitting pants is getting the pattern's crotch curve to reflect the shape of the body it is being fit to. An ill-fitting crotch curve results in drag lines, wrinkles, and excess fabric that can make pants uncomfortable and unflattering. The crotch curve needs to accommodate the length, width, and the depth of the body as well as align to the curves within those parameters. This area of the human body is as individual as your DNA, so it's no wonder we have trouble figuring out what to do when we're not satisfied with the fit of our pants. I'm Alexandra Morgan from In-House Pattern Studio, and this week we're on to video number four of the Fitting Pants video series. If you've missed the previous videos, I really encourage you to go back and watch them. They contain important information that will help you understand the concepts that I'm going to present today. When fitting the crotch curve of pants, what you are actually doing is designing negative space. This is what I think makes fitting pants so difficult to understand. This negative space consists of the crotch length, the crotch depth, and the curves that transition between the two. Now this negative space is what your body occupies. So let's take a look at the crotch curve of a pattern in relationship to the body. Okay, so let's take a look at what the crotch length, the crotch depth, and of course the curves in between that join the two, how they relate to the body. So what I've done to demonstrate this is I've actually put some uh, L-square rulers together so that they create this sort of rectangle shape. Now if you put your pant patterns together, which I'll show you in a little bit, you're going to see that it actually is made up of a box. And the part that you're designing that is negative space is the crotch curve that goes in this sort of rectangle shape. So just to demonstrate that I'm going to slip this onto Margie here between her legs. The crotch length is indicated by the space needed to accommodate the figure from the waistline to the base of the torso or at crotch level. The crotch depth is indicated by the space needed to accommodate the figure from the center front of the body to the center back. Now within these two guidelines, we have the shape of the crotch curve, which must follow the shape of the body accurately in order for the pant to fit. So the crotch curve needs to actually fill in this area of the rectangle on the front and the back in order to fit the body correctly. Now, although achieving the overall length and width of the space needed for an individual is ideal, it is not the final solution. You also need to consider the position of the hip line in relationship to the waistline. Since the goal when fitting pants is to make the hip line level, you can use it as a guideline to gain understanding as to where you may need more or less of the measurement. Let's take a look at the pattern now and I'll explain this even further. Now that we know where the crotch length, the crotch depth, and the crotch curves are on the body, we can now take a look at the pant pattern and define them here. So as you can see here, I've created this lovely little red lines which indicate that rectangular shape that I talked about. Now, of course, here, the crotch length is this distance between the center front waistline and the base of the torso at the front, and the center back waistline and the base of the torso at the back. The crotch depth is made of this distance that goes from center front to center back. Now, the negative space I'm talking about is right here, in between here. And this is where your body actually sits in a pair of pants. So this is why the crotch curve or the shape of the curves that you have here are so very important. Because if they don't align to the shape of your curves, obviously you'll get ill-fitting pants. Achieving this overall length and depth of the crotch curve isn't the entire answer to having a well fitting pair of pants. What you also have to consider is the position of this hip line in relationship to the waistline. And this is where you can use the hip line or your horizontal balance lines as a guideline as to where you may need to add or reduce measurements. 
the whole purpose when you fit pants is to create a hip line that is level. When your hip line is level and you have the correct crotch length and crotch depth for both the front and the back pattern, as well as a crotch curve shape that follows your body, you will have a well-fitting pair of pants. Let's dive a little bit deeper into this concept with an example from one of my pant drafting workshops. So this particular sample was created using this student's personal body measurements. So this is drafted to measurements and we have sewn up a sample to assess the fit. And if you've ever gone through the process of creating your own personal blocks, you'll know that they are not perfect the very first time. But you can see from this example that it is very, very close. There's just some fine tuning that we need to do. So let's kind of dive into the assessment here. So as you know, the whole goal when you fit pants is to make sure that you actually get this hip line to to hang level with the floor. Now your first clue as to the fitting issues that you need to address is going to be based on this position of this hip line. So I'm, let's take a look at the back here first. So because you can see quite clearly that the back hip line is dipping down. Now what this is telling me that is that the overall length of the rise is actually pretty good because I can see that the pant is actually going up to her waistline. So in terms of the overall length of the back rise, we know that it's pretty good. Now, the problem that we're seeing and the reason that this hip line is dipping down at the center back is because there is excess measurement between the waist and the hip line and not enough measurement attributed to the rise below the hip line. So what this means is that you're going to have to reduce the length of the rise above the hip line and increase it below the hip line. And this will keep the overall rise length the same but help you to achieve that level hip line. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you the pattern adjustments in a minute here, but I wanted to show you how I read these lines. Now there's one more uh, Thing that we need to address at the back, like I said in the previous segments, is you have to also consider the crotch curve shape. So even though we may have the correct measurements after our first few adjustments, you're going to see here that there's kind of these commas. I call them commas because they make this sort of um, excess fabric here. This is the body actually pushing the fabric away. So what this is telling me is that the crotch curve of the back is not correct. It needs to actually um, have a little bit more scooped out of the fabric and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Now you can see here the vertical balance line at the side seam looks pretty good. The hang of the pant looks pretty good. The front fitting is actually very good as well. The balance lines for the hip line and even the crotch line is actually very level. So it tells me that this is pretty good in terms of the um, position of the measurement. But the problems that we do have is we have a little bit too high of a waistline at the top, meaning her, where she would like her pants to sit at the waistline is a little bit too high. So this is just a matter of removing some of the fabric at the top so that she gets more of this slanted waistline, which is always more comfortable in pants. The other thing you're going to consider is also this crotch curve. So the front crotch curve is also very important and also must be address the body that you're fitting. So this is showing me excess volume here, which is telling me again that there's too much fabric in this area, so we need to scoop some out. So we need to get rid of some. So these are the assessment for this particular pant. You can always notice excess fabric because you'll see sort of this comma shape. You, you, you kind of see this comma and you'll see comma here. That, that means you have to scoop out. Now, when you start to see um, whiskers, in other words, the drag lines that will actually show as whiskers here, 
it means that you have to actually add some fabric. So in other words, it's too tight in that area. Okay, so I wanna move next to the pattern adjustments for this particular fitting sample so that you can see how you can use the hip lines and the adjustments to the crotch length, the crotch depth, and the crotch curve to achieve a better fitting pant. Once you understand the concept of adding and removing length based on the position of the hip line or the horizontal balance lines, you can boil down all crotch fitting solutions into three categories. The first one is crotch length adjustments. The second one is crotch extension adjustments. And the third one is curve shape adjustments. Now let's take a look at what that means and we'll take a look at the pattern adjustments for the example that I showed you. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. So here is the back view of the sample. And you can see here, as I mentioned, that there is excess measurement from waist to the hip line and not enough measurement from hip line to the crotch extension. So if we take a look at our back pattern here, you can see where I've made this adjustment. So what I'm going to do is slash and close above the hip line and I'm going to slash and open below the hip line in order to keep the measurement intact because we have determined that the overall back rise is correct. It's just that the measurement isn't located in the correct place. So what I've done here is opened here to get this hip line to move up and I've closed here so that I don't have excess rise length. So this actually solves that distribution of measurement problem. I've reduced the length from waist to hip and I've increased the length from hip to the crotch point. So this is how you want to try and uh, level out the hip line. Now as I mentioned the additional measurement uh, problem that we have is that there is some excess fabric showing here at the crotch curve. So what you're going to do to eliminate that excess fabric is scoop this part out. So all you're doing is removing some of this excess fabric. Now to decide how much you're going to make these adjustments by is it's really kind of trial and error. What you can do at the back of the pant is you can put an elastic around your hip and just measure how far your hip line is dipping at center back and that much that's going to be the amount that you're going to remove from above the hip and then the same amount that you'll you'll add to the crotch extension. This is going to help you kind of assess how much it is. How much to scoop is something that you're going to have to just uh, sort of experiment with by pinning out and seeing how much. I would start with about three eighths of an inch um, at a time. You don't want to scoop too much because you'll also create an ill-fitting or a tight crotch area. So you want to be kind of conservative as you move along. Now I do want to just quickly talk about the front as well. Okay, so we have a front view of the sample here as well and you can see actually there really isn't a problem with the the crotch length or the crotch depth. But what we do have a problem with is the crotch curve. So you can see there is excess volume here in the front of the pant. We're gonna solve that in exactly the same way as we, we, saw, we solved the excess fabric in the back. We're gonna scoop out the front crotch area. Once again, this is a matter of experimentation. On the front crotch, I would kind of do it in increments of about an eighth or a quarter of an inch at most. You do not want to make this crotch curve too sharp because you, you need it to follow the shape of this pubic area. Now you can see here also I've made another adjustment up here to my pattern and that's simply to solve for this issue of that slanted waist. So I want to actually remove some measurement just from the top of the pant. Now the reason I'm not making a wedge like I did at the back pattern is because I can see my hip line is actually fairly level. And I think when I reshape that waistline, it's really gonna make things um, kind of come together really neatly. Okay, so those are the adjustments that I'd make to my pattern based on this fitting assessment.
Now, as I said, if your balance lines are going in the other direction or the opposite way to what I've shown you here, you will make the opposite adjustment. Now just to review, I want to kind of just demonstrate those three adjustments that I told you about earlier. So you can see here that we have made crotch length adjustments. So the crotch length adjustment here on the back is this wedge that we created here. The crotch length adjustment that we made on the front is this adjustment here where we changed the slope of the waistline at the front. The crotch extension adjustment that we've done here on the back is located here. So in other words, we've extended the extension to be longer so that we could move the hip line up when it sits on the body. The crotch extension adjustment was not done on the front, but what we have done is changed the crotch curve, which is the third adjustment that I told you about. So we've actually changed the shape of this curve to hopefully accommodate the shape of the person that's wearing this sample. Now you're going to notice one thing. When you adjust the shape of the curve, you definitely change the measurement of the back rise or the front rise. Now this means that you may have to do additional adjustments because it will make the lines longer in this case, um, but that's something that you can assess later. So once again, crotch length adjustments, crotch extension adjustments, and then of course crotch curve adjustments. So we've demonstrated those three most common issues here. I hope this demonstration has inspired you to think about pant fitting a little bit differently and has given you the courage to give pant making at least one more try. I won't promise it will be easy, but I do guarantee that after all of the hard work, you'll be thrilled with your first pair of perfectly fitted pants. If you are interested in drafting a pair of made to measure pants under my guidance, I have the perfect workshop for you. It's the Pant Block Weekend event. It's coming up at the end of this month and I've only got three seats left. I'll leave a link below so that you can get all the details, but act fast because I won't be doing this workshop again until the fall of 2019. Well, that's it for this video series. By no means does this series solve for all possible pant fitting issues. What I hope you have gained from watching is an understanding of how to assess and solve for some of the most common issues and have started to understand the value of using the horizontal and vertical balance lines on your samples. Now having these guidelines really will help you in your quest for better fitting garments. I'll chat with you soon. Bye for now.